Originally planned on chasing June 5th, 6th, and 7th, with the 7th looking like it was going to be the biggest day of the three. The 6th turned out to be a big cat bust, and I spent the day milling about at a Wendy's outside in Nebraska City with a dozen other chasers. I had learned that morning that, tragically, Fabian Guerrera had been killed in an automobile accident on his way out to a storm chase. Fabian and I had been storm chase partners since 2005, so it was devastating news to hear. On the 7th, I spent much of the morning waiting in Holton, Kansas, way up in northeast Kansas with a bunch of other chasers from Illinois. Storms fired north of the Kansas border, however, and we wound up getting on the first supercell near Pawnee City, Nebraska. The supercell had just gone tornado worn by the time I intercepted, so I was in perfect position. You can see a big rain-free base here, but not much in the way of low-level rotation or any sort of lowering. I got a tip from a chaser who was blasting east to get ahead of the storm that there was baseball sized hail just behind this base. I didn't want to wreck the van with that so I too ran east to get ahead of the storm. As I was driving east with the camera pointed behind, a classic wall cloud tried to form. You can see the tail cloud here off to the right ingesting rain cool air. The inflow was pretty strong as you can really see it pulling in these clouds. The supercell looked like it was gaining strength here and might be getting ready to produce a tornado. I was soon joined by a few other storm chasers here. And you can also see a large uh, caravan of chasers driving past as well. On the road again, the highway took me south a couple miles, and looking back at the updraft base of the storm, you can see a big rear flanking downdraft starting to cut a horseshoe shaped clear slot through the base. This is what storm chasers look for and often precludes a tornado. If this storm were going to produce a tornado, it probably would have done it right there. With the storm moving northeast, I had to get ahead of it a ways before I could get to the next road that went north, which is why it looks like I'm driving away from the storm at this point. I paused here to shoot some pictures of the wall cloud and bubbling convection in the updraft tower. Other supercells were now firing in the south, and one in particular would become dominant. This storm was still tornado worn, however, and it looked good, so I stuck with it for a while longer, even though it's probably on its way out at this point. Bumped into some of the Illinois gang here as I stopped for one last look at the base of this storm. After watching several radar scans, I could see that this storm was now starting to die and the supercell to the southeast was definitely the best place to be. So I abandoned this storm. At the top of the screen here, you can see another big inflow band trying to form on the forward flank of this updraft base. That's fellow convective addiction chaser Brad Goddard in the black pickup behind me. Even though the structure on this storm still looks pretty good, you can see that the updraft tower has shrunk in size from what it was a few minutes ago. This storm has moved into an environment with less instability, perhaps because the supercells to the south were choking it. Looking east now, you can see the storm I'm heading to. 
This was just a massive supercell, and you can see the anvil there at the top and the updraft tower on the left going up like a huge atom bomb. There's the first supercell we were on originally, several minutes later. You can see it shriveled up quite a bit, but still very photogenic. The next supercell had crossed into Missouri, and there are only a few crossings across the Missouri River. So I wound up in a gigantic line of storm chasers, including the Vortex 2 Armada. You can see one of their radar trucks right there. Here's the storm on the Missouri side after I'd driven across the river. Threw a bunch of rain on the back end of the storm. Missouri is infamous for having twisting roads, hills, and a bunch of trees, so it's loathed by chasers. You can see me winding my way down trying to get ahead of the storm here. Earlier this storm had dropped hail that was over 5 inches in diameter. I saw some of it laying on the ground but didn't have time to stop and pick any of it up as I was trying to keep up with the storm. Hail that size is quite rare and it meant this storm had an extremely powerful updraft. If the storm had produced a tornado, it could have been quite large. However, it never did other than a couple of brief spin-ups that the radars and Vortex 2 picked up. As far as Missouri goes, this area right here wasn't too bad actually. There was enough openings between the trees that you could actually see the storms. Right here you can see another big inflow band trying to form underneath the base. This was a promising sign but ultimately didn't result in anything further tornado wise. The base on the storm was fanning out into a huge mess and it became quite difficult to find a point of attack on it. So eventually Brad and I let it go to get some pretty pictures on the back end of the storm. Up ahead of me there you can see several other storm chasers including a mobile mesonet in the Vortex 2 group. You can see some broad scale rotation here as the whole base is slowly rotating. This is harder to pick up in real time but with the time lapse you can really see the fluid motions in these clouds that can be quite subtle at times. It was clear behind this supercell, so we had direct sunshine on the back end. This made for some great lighting and really photogenic moments. Behind the camera, a big double rainbow had formed, and I was shooting stills of that while I let the camera dome get a time lapse of the sunset. Brad and I were ducking behind his truck, using it as a shield from the blowing rain. Meanwhile, there were some Vortex 2 mesonets driving up and down the road taking measurements. It looked like the storm was starting to die, and it would be getting dark soon, and we didn't want to chase the supercell through the jungles of Missouri, so we decided to let it go here.